Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's the directorial debut of screenwriter Shane Black. Now, Shane Black is famous for writing the first two Lethal Weapon films, The Last Boy Scout, and receiving, I believe, a $4 million payday for the spec script of The Long Kiss Goodnight. Robert Downey Jr.'s character, who after mistakenly walking into an audition and they think he's a great actor because he just robbed a store with a friend who's been shot and he has to do a scene about someone who just had their friend shot and he's of course brilliant in it because he's just referenced this and they think he's a method actor and send him off to Hollywood to do a screen test. And while he's there, he's told he has to, with the help of Val Kilmer's character, Gay Perry, uh, that's his actual character name, they go to meet a detective because he needs detective experience or something. I guess that's the script he's going to do, whatever. And at the same time, he tells this girl, played by Michelle Monaghan, who grew up in the same small town that he did, and tells her that he is a private eye and that she has other private eye business for him. And the story goes on from there in this detective noir type scenario. And I'm not gonna call it a neo-noir. This is very just classic noir. One of the things about Kiss Kiss Bang Bang that I think is really smart is Noir-wise, it's kind of a cliched plot. It's a plot that's been done to death a million times. They explain that there's these detective novels, and in it, the detective novels, the detective always is solving like a regular case and a really extraordinary case, and then it turns out they're actually the same case. Very kind of structured plot method that I've seen in a lot of noirs. And I think if this film had just done the plot and not had the wit in it, it would not be as good of a movie. It's just with uh, Shane Black's amazing use of dialogue makes it a lot more and with the wit, even though it is being like a little too knowing, a little too smart sometimes, almost irritatingly smart at the beginning, it got me more into it, it got me more involved. It's calling itself out, made it more inviting and I think made it a better movie. I mean, it's like the Roger Ebert quote, it's not what you do in a movie, it's how you do it. And I think how they went about this plot that isn't the greatest plot in the world, it's very Hollywood simple noir plot, but they had fun with it, it made Kiss Kiss Bang Bang into an awesome experience. When I was watching this film, I was thinking about Shane Black, and Shane Black, you know, he's a very Hollywood screenwriter. Shane Black likes to work in the studio system. He doesn't do independent movies. He's not really, I think, interested in making non-Hollywood movies. He's a Hollywood filmmaker. That's just part of his style. I mean, he made Lethal Weapon, he worked on Last Action Hero, he made big, very Hollywood movies. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, as witty and fun as and post-Tarantino as it is, it's kind of the Hollywood equivalent of that. It's a lot better at it than a lot of them are, even though a lot of that dialogue in the 90s became irritating and all too knowing. You know, it's hard to watch some of the movies that I thought were cool in the 90s now because I'm like, oh my God, the dialogue is overbearing. But Shane Black is a good screenwriter. He's a great screenwriter. He knows how to write good dialogue. The better parts of this film and the better parts of the dialogue remind me of people like Preston Sturges and Billy Wilder. And he has that wit to him that if anyone was going to do kind of a Tarantino rip-off-y thing, especially a Hollywood Tarantino rip-off-y movie, I think Shane Black is perfect for it. I think Shane Black came about it in the right way. It's knowing and it's wit is really interesting and I love how classic Hollywood this is. It's very classic noir. It's not made by somebody who doesn't know what a noir is. It's written by somebody who really gets what a noir is. And that's why the casting is really brilliant. Now this is the film that really I think brought Robert Downey Jr. out. It was made the year before Iron Man. Then he was a movie star. But this is really the beginning of him as a movie star. Robert Downey Jr. has a classic movie star way about him. He can carry that Shane Black dialogue the way like a Cary Grant or a James Cagney could. He feels like someone who could really go through a Billy Wilder movie. And that's the kind of person I think Shane Black really needs in this movie. It does feel like as it goes on, he becomes more confident and more determined. He goes from this thief who really didn't know where he was going in his life. And at the beginning, he feels more like the Robert Downey Jr. I grew up with. And then as it went on, he becomes like the, the hero. And it feels like he's Robert Downey Jr., the movie star. I liked Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer's doing more of a straight man, but they have such good charisma together. And Val Kilmer, this might be the last good performance I'd seen from him. I can't think of a good performance he's done since Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I grew up with Val Kilmer, and I think he can be funny. I mean, Top Secret is a great, great comedy. 
and Val Kilmer is really good in Top Secret. It's a very different performance and a very different movie from Top Secret, obviously, but I, I like that he did a comedy and he could do it very well and play a straight man so well in this film. He's more of a straight man than Robert Downey. Well, he's a straight man compared to Robert Downey Jr. in this film. And even like Michelle Monaghan, who almost feels like she's doing what Emma Stone is doing now. I think she was a lot better than Emma Stone. I don't know if Emma Stone's ripping her off or it's just a coincidence, but I just feel like there's something in there that's very Emma Stone-ish. For a while, everyone's like, you have to see Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And I never did. I saw Iron Man 3 was coming out and I was like, well, as good a time as any to see this because I will do it around the time Iron Man 3 is because why not? And I'm glad I saw it. I don't think I'm as crazy about it as everybody else. I like how witty and kind of self-referential and self-aware it is. It's very 90s. Shane Black, anything he writes feels very 90s. It's like he's stuck in the late 80s, early 90s. Maybe it's just the way about him and the way about his writing is very much that time. It is dated, but it doesn't bother me, but it always feels that way. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, of course, has a lot of different interpretations. The term came from was slang for James Bond movies and apparently there was an unused Shirley Basie song for Thunderball called Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And there was a 1966 spy comedy called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. But the second Pauline Kael collection of reviews was called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And Shane Black is a huge movie fan, if you couldn't tell, especially from this movie. You can tell he's a huge movie fan. I think it was based on the Pauline Kael book. I'm a Kael fan, I'm a big Pauline Kael fan, and I don't think I'm going out on a limb or pushing my own agenda by saying that. I really do think this is named after the Pauline Kael book because why would you name it after a fucking James Bond movie? This has nothing to do with James Bond. Like, what does this have to do? They don't even talk about James Bond. I mean, you can kind of see it in the book covers of this these book series they're really into in the movie, but that's about it. I just, maybe, well, actually, now maybe that's the connection, but I still feel like maybe a little bit, a bit of it is the Pauline Kael book. I mean, it's such a famous Pauline Kael book. I've read some of that book. I do like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I I guess I'm just not one over as much as everyone else, but I think it's, it's a good movie and it shows, it's probably one of Shane Black's best written screenplays, or maybe it's his best written as in it feels very written. It's his most written screenplay because you can definitely get the sense of a writer while hearing it. I think that goes for a lot of his scripts, but especially this one. So if you have seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. Yes, of course, I did this for Iron Man 3, and my review of Iron Man 3 uh, is up, as well as I also did an Iron Man 2 review uh, right before Iron Man 3, and uh, I also have reviewed Iron Man 1, so you can watch all the Iron Man reviews right here, and uh, thanks for watching.